Hello fellow editors, welcome to this special masterclass with me, Paddy Bird, the founder of Inside the Edit, and in conjunction with our partners over at Adobe, we've got uh, some really cool things we're going to talk about today. Uh, we're going to go into a lot of depth into one specific part of the craft of editing. Um, so one of the things which we really, really get asked a lot on our on our course uh, inside the edit, on our boot camps and webinars and, and on our master's degree as well is if we're going right back to the beginning, how do we set up a project? How do we set up a film? You've got this enormous amount of footage. How do we begin to start breaking that down and organizing it? You know, this is a real fundamental question um, in editing. It's the first stage. It's the thing you do before anything else, which is incredibly important. And if we get it right, uh, the interesting thing is, is that, you know, not that our, that our edit is going to be easy, whether it's a, you know, a two minute news report or a music video or a, you know, a lifestyle branding film or a documentary or reality TV or drama. It doesn't matter what the genre is. If we get it right, we have a kind of seamlessness into our workflow that is the best that it can be. And what I mean by that is we don't have any barriers to creativity. Yeah. Now I'll go into that a bit more later, but essentially let's understand that by comparing it to if we get it wrong. So if we do not set up a project in the way that it should be, be set up for maximizing organization. Guess what happens? We suffer in terms of time. So if you've got an enormous amount of footage in your project and it's not organized and compartmentalized and ring fenced in certain different ways, then we are going to be spending that precious time that we have because we all have only a certain amount of time on an edit, even feature films, you know, that lasts a year or two in, in post-production. Every single moment should be used for creativity and not for searching. So if we haven't organized our project, um, you know, to a very high degree, um, this is what we're going to run into. We're going to steal time away from creativity. Because think about it. If you've got a working week, it's just let's say, let's say you work, you know, 10 hours a day. You work 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. You know, it might be more, might be less in certain countries or, you know, in certain genres. That gives you 50 hours a week. Yeah, Monday to Friday. Now, if you're going to spend, say, one hour of that day, uh, or what or five hours of that week searching for footage or searching for things that you should be getting and pulling up into your project monitor straight away that robs time away from creativity so this is the downside of what happens if we don't organize properly the key fundamental thing that we want to do is we need to get to know the footage and the organization of that footage better than the director in the first few stages of the um in in the first few stages of the edit so that's one of the key things that we want to do here so we're going to look today at organizing a project for maximum um uh workflow speed for creativity and we're going to discover all the secondary things as well that we look at and that are available to us once we go through this organization and breakdown process and I literally have here a blank you know a completely blank uh Premiere Pro project all I've got it's called you know organizing your film and I've just got a bunch of raw footage that's it that's completely what we've got so we're going to take this this whole thing and we're going to we're going to look at, at the ways a professional editor would break this down what they gain from it, what they lose from it, and um, and get you to a point where we're maximizing creativity. Now, let's just go off on a bit of a tangent here and 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 
talk about a couple of things before we start doing this. Firstly, it is not uncommon for certain clients and directors to get a bit frustrated and agitated during this initial stage of organization at the start of a project. They see it as not making progress and we're sitting there creating essentially a kind of well-organized digital filing cabinet and sometimes especially directors or producers who aren't that experienced um, they don't see the upsides of doing this mass organization not all of them experienced directors and producers will be like yep go for it you go and do this thing um, it's uh, it's a vital part of the creative process but that's just one thing to keep in mind sometimes when you're going into a project um, and you're working with maybe a production company or a team of filmmakers who are not, you know, super, super experienced. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it, we all start somewhere and it's important to that we all go through these things in our career. It's important to know that sometimes you may get a little bit of kickback about organization. So we have to, it's our job to convince our clients that the benefits of going through this very quite, you know, very detailed uh, breakdown is, you know, is incredibly important. So that's the first thing. The second thing I would say is that there are an unbelievable amount of secondary uh, benefits to going through a breakdown process. And we're going to talk about some of these over this, this course of these, um, these few videos. But essentially, one of the major reasons that we're here, obviously to edit the footage and, 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 and craft it and structure it and, and, and all that kind of stuff, the creative side. But we're also here to give our opinion, whether shots work, whether sequences work, whether what the director and producer envisaged before they started shooting and while they were shooting, uh, now that it's ended up in the edit suite, is it gonna work? Is their intention of what they planned is that going to work and that's a major part of our job they're paying us also to give uh for us to give our opinion our first impression we're the first audience and that's why it's so vital that we have you know we have a um um a strong opinion about what's going to work and what's not as well as designing the intentions within the scenes and sequences that they had way back when, before they even picked up a camera. So that's a really important thing to point out. Um, now, how do we do that? Well, one of the major ways we do that is we have to start analyzing. We have to start analyzing a project. We have to start analyzing how this footage is shot. You know, let's just take a look at some of this footage here. I've just got this, you know, this big, bin of imported raw footage you know with all of these clips uh this is from the documentary that we use uh at inside the edit it's called cities at dawn um and we've got all of these projects some of them interviews this one's got a bit of actuality um you know we've got all these uh there's some interviews there you know, I'm looking at all of this stuff. There's some actualities type stuff there. Oh, there's an interview at the BBC that we shot for this documentary. You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff here, which is very, very interesting. Now, one of these benefits that we're talking about is as I'm scanning through all this stuff, I'm getting to know the characters. I'm getting to know how it's shot. I'm getting to know the kind of feel of what this film could be. Now, this deep level of analysis is incredibly important to us as editors because we start looking at, you know, every cinematographer, DOP, camera operator, they're going to shoot something differently. They're going to shoot something differently dependent on the style, depending on the genre of the piece, depending on the duration. You know, some some of it may be all, you know, very clinical and look like a fin David Fincher film or a Sam Mendes film or, you know, and it might be all on tracks and very cinematic and, you know, dark or moody or whatever it is. Some of it, something else might be very observational and handheld. 
and lots of pull focuses and movement of the camera and crash zooms and things like that. So when we go through this process of analysis and organization, we're looking to, to have a good idea about how this is, you know, our first impressions about how this is going to be cut. And that's incredibly important. So the secondary, this is one of many of the secondary effects of organizing a project, the positive sides of organizing a project, is you start analyzing your characters, you start analyzing how it was shot, what the genre is, any nuances, any problems within the footage. Oh, let's look at the, um, let's look at how the characters talk. Um, are there any accents we may need to be made aware of? You know, that, that maybe someone talks very fast, very slow. You know, are there things that we're going to have in their delivery that, that would make us pause that we might have to um, be concerned about when we start crafting scenes? It could be anything. Um, so analysis is one of the major steps in the early stages of editing that is key to our job as editors. It really is. And the breaking down an organization of the footage is the tool in which we use, um, um, which we use to do that. It's incredibly important. So let's start off with some broad brushes. Let's start off with some, some general organization within the project window, you know? Um, let's, we've literally started with a huge amount of footage. This has just been given to me, let's just say I'm, a, I'm an editor and this has just been given to me. I've got a massive drive and we've got like, you know, in this particular case, we've got like 35 hours of footage with all these different roles. It's all these different shoots shot around Europe. Uh, this is like a two year project that was um, shot. But of course, all of this theory applies as well to, um, to any genre. It's incredibly important to start breaking it down because days and weeks into the project you know the director could be sitting beside us and they say oh what about this shot remember that shot on blah 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 you know when we shot this or at that shooting location or at this time of night or maybe that shot's what we need here if we spend the next five ten minutes trying to hunt through all of this raw footage and isolating and finding that shot we could it, we could essentially lose an enormous amount of time throughout that morning, throughout that day, throughout that week, throughout that month. So classification, compartmentalization um, of, uh, is, is an enormous part of what we do. Um, we do not want to spend time searching for stuff. So I'm sure this is um, very common for, for many of you. We've got a big bunch of, you know, uh, a big bin of imported footage here. We're gonna we're gonna start breaking that down. So I would just the, the documentary is called Cities at Dawn. I'm just gonna rename that and just call it raw footage. Um there we go. Raw footage, uh you know, um rushes is what it's sometimes called in, in various um places in um in, in the UK, in England or in, in, in America. But you know, it all kind of means the same thing. So as a broad stroke, what am I looking at here to, to have this first layer of organization? Well, there's some fundamental key things that I'm looking at that I will start classifying using my bins. So I've got my raw footage there. I'm just going to make a new bin here. Now, what's the first thing that we make usually in, in any kind of project? Well, it's sequences. So I'm going to make a bin called sequences like that. There we go. And all of my sequences, all of my rough cuts, all of my assemblies, I'm going to put them all in there. Now, of course, we can start subcategorizing them and having like new things within this bin and, you know, scenes within, um, you know, uh, part one sequences or part two sequences. So I can I can subcategorize in there. But for now, let's just let's just call that sequences. I've just used an abbreviation there. Sequences. I've, I've used that for many, many years. So what are the other kind of major things that I'm looking at um, in any one project? Well, another one is going to be music for sure. So I can import all my music in there. And of course, I can use a different bin structure within that music bin 
to have different types of music um, and things like that. So that is a, you know, a broad brush stroke uh, of a major kind of element within the film that I'm going to be looking at uh, that I want. Um, we could make up uh, any other things uh, as well, dependent on things like what what the structure of the film is. So we could actually have we could actually have a, a bin called scenes. Um, scenes. Um, we could you know it could be sequences, it could be scenes, whatever makes sense to us really. Now, um, we could have, same we're doing like a, let's just say we're doing a 60 minute documentary for, I don't know, UK television or French television or Australian television or US television, doesn't matter. Maybe they're in parts. So you'd have part one, part two, part three, part four. You could create a whole bunch of bins called part one and all of your scenes would go, all your sequences in there for part one, maybe it's like 15, 20 minutes long. Um, you know, or, or, or 10 minutes long, however it, however it needs to be in that, that particular country, they'll all go in there. What we're doing here is this first layer of organization, which is really, really important. So it could be any one of these things, whatever you feel comfortable with, whatever the, the client may feel comfortable with, that would be quick access to this fundamental, you know, broad brush 40,000 40, feet kind of wide view organization, you know? So um, we could have assemblies, you know, sequences or rough cuts, you know, all of these things are, are, are kind of ways to put, organizational ways to put these different elements in that we're going to organize, that we're going to start cutting. Um, I always have a bin called junk or rubbish um something like that now this is a bin which i find very very handy because if i don't like something i'm like oh that scene doesn't work or that little montage doesn't work or whatever if i don't like it um but i don't want to throw it away because i've done quite a bit of work on it um and i might be able to drag some element out of that later on um i'll put it in the junk file you know, um, I I really don't like deleting things. Um, I'm a big fan of of um, just duplicate something. Uh, don't delete it. Duplicate a sequence. Go off and and work on something else. But leave a paper trail. Leave a, a kind of chain of evidence of where you've been and what's happened. Because you don't know whether you know in a week or two weeks time. You may end up going, oh, you know, I've changed my mind about all this. Let me go back to that sequence. And there's an element within that sequence that I might find I think is going to be useful. So don't throw anything away. If you've got sequences that aren't working, just dump them in a, a, in a junk junk folder. And yeah, you know, th th that's a key thing in editing. You never know what's going to happen when, you know, that your client sees it, your big client sees it or the studio or your advertising or news or whatever you're in they you know you and the director can be working away on something and you may have this great idea and you have a very clear direction of where you're going but then until you actually show the people who are you know paying the money all bets are off you know so keep those first drafts those first impressions those first assemblies those first rough cuts and stick them in a place like the junk the junk um folder the junk bin very very handy so you can see this is a kind of initial compartmentalization of a bunch of our footage here. Now, within the raw footage, let's just go back. So we've got a junk file folder, anything like sequences I'll stick in there. We've got, um, we've got a kind of, uh, you know, we've got a music folder. We can import music into there. If we've got things like part one, let's just say we don't have it in this one, but you could do, you could split your project up into that. You could split it into rough cuts, into scenes, into sequences. I always like sequences. Sequences is a kind of, it's, it's a one I've used for many, many years. But of course, you could do things like locations. You know, how are you subcategorizing all of these things? So locations, look at this. So in the raw footage, this documentary was actually shot in, you know, London. There's one. 
Um, there's the Tower of London. You know, we've got these these lovely um, these lovely images of these quite uh, you know iconic um, locations. So there's London, um, but we've also got places like Venice in Italy. Um, really beautiful, uh, beautiful areas in Venice as well. You know, some lovely footage on that. So that's another location. And of course, we've also got Paris. Um, so Paris, overlooking Paris, you know, so we could split all of this footage up into locations if the documentary or the project or the news report or whatever we're working on had an element around the structure of the film, you know, a key part of the structure of the film, right? It starts in London, then it goes to Venice, then it goes to New York, then it goes to whatever. The whole point about organization is we're using potential ways to actually, uh, the film was structured in the bin structure of the project, you know? So this is really, really um, an important part of it. Um, it's, 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 it's really fundamental. So let's, I don't think we're going to do locations on this one. Let me just delete that one. I'm going to, we're going to tidy up. I like having a very, very tidy, very tidy indeed project um, window here. Um, I've got my sequences. I've got my raw footage. I've got my music. I've got my junk, uh, you know, uh, and I will have sub bins within that that are going to help me out and, um, and organize. So let's just start looking through the footage now. So the footage, this is really kind of interesting. There's an enormous amount of roles here. So what am I thinking about the footage? Now, these are pretty well labeled, you know, Tony leaving role one. So that's him packing up. Um, you know, I can scan through all this stuff and start organizing. But I'm starting to think about all of these different scenes. Yeah, so what I could do is I could cut them up into potential scenes. I could cut them up into potential interviews and things like that. So I would go through and essentially I would put extra an extra layer of organization within the raw footage. That's one thing I could definitely do. Um, but pretty soon, once I've done this sort of first layer of organization, I'm going to be looking to start cutting things and start organizing on the timeline and things like that. But I'm going to be looking at a possible sub layer of organization within that, within this first um, big raw footage scene, because it's just overwhelming. Now, let's just talk about that for a while, because in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to start looking at how we start the different ways to actually take footage and start breaking it down on the timeline and breaking it down even further within the um, project window. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that we, you know, when we get into that deep analysis, we're going through a secondary layer of, you know, interpretation about what we think of the footage. So we're actually getting down into the real kind of meat and potatoes of a scene. But just from a kind of you know, a, a larger point of view, if we've got these major kind of, um, if we've got these major bins that are in our project where we can start classifying all these major kind of departments like music, like raw footage, like sequences, like scenes, like locations, whatever we're doing. And if we have that kind of overview and go, okay, I know where everything is within those bins, then we can go into each one of those bins and start subclassifying then as well. So it's a really, really important part of this process. It's a really, really important part of the early stages of any edit, which, you know, is incredibly important if we do not want to cause problems later on. So in the next video, now that we've looked at this kind of overview and some of the reasoning behind why we do this, we're going to start seeing in the next video some more in-depth analysis and more fragmentation and organization and kind of ring fencing in uh, in the deeper levels of what we've been shooting, um, which is fantastic because we want to break down um, a lot of this footage um, in, a, in a way that's 
so easy for us to to gain access to now here's the the final thing i want to say this is there any you know i get this question all the time on our master's degree and 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 um all the students we teach on the on the boot camps and and the webinars that we do is there an exact way to organize and label everything in terms of what things should be called and what things should you know are there like industry standards the answer to that is definitely not you can have sequences, you can have scenes, you can have bins with raw footage and different types, a bin called music and a bin called, you know, graphics and, and stuff like that. The most important point is, is it makes sense to you. Absolutely makes sense to you. So you, the whole purpose of this is for you to gain access to all of this content incredibly quickly very very quickly so you're basically creating a language which makes sense to you so if you are used to organizing your computer folders and stuff like that in a specific way with specific term terminology and, and and a kind of thought process around it then great stand on the shoulders of what you've done for many years anyway if you're new to editing it's all about speed it's it's all geared towards create it's creative speed and our ability to not steal organizational time from creative time. We want to maximize our creative time. I think it was Leonardo da Vinci that said something like, we never finish a piece of art. We, we simply give it over. We hand it over in the time allowed. I'm paraphrasing there a bit. I don't think he said that word for word, but it's a beautiful sentiment because essentially we only have so much time. Do we want to devote that to errors in time management like searching or do we want to devote it to making our film look beautiful? Because that's the stuff that really takes time. So we don't want to waste it um, by searching for stuff. Um, so what I would say is once we got that initial classification, these wider things that make sense to you, um, then we're in a really, really good place. This language has to make sense to you. This classification, this fragmentation, this organization has to make sense to you. The only time that it is not is if you're handing the project over to another editor because they will have to interpret the way you see organization. So it's not like you could, I wouldn't advise you to go and call these names and just make up a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't exist. I would say in the, in the, you know, supposing you got called off on another job or you had to go and do something that was a kind of emergency or something like that, you have to assume that you're going to hand it over in the person that you're handing it over to. Uh, you don't want them to be, you know, you really don't want them to, to have any illusions about where each individual thing is. So that's, you know, don't stray too far. That's basically what I'm saying. So that's it for part one. That's it for this you know, first look at why we organize to such depth and how we do it in this first initial stage with the bin structure. We're going to go in part two, we're going to go a lot more uh, in depth um, and look at how we start compartmentalizing all of these different things. And, and then in part three of this film, we're going to start looking at um, how we do things like organize on the timeline for maximizing. So we just, we need to be as, as organized here on the timeline as we are here in our project folder is incredibly important and we'll go into a whole bunch of depth on that so i hope you'll join me on part two very very soon thanks for watching